Hey everybody, come in, cutting up, keeping it real. Um, I am uh, going to show you how I am going to season this brisket this morning. Um, almost afternoon, well, I don't know if it's 10, 20. Anyway, we're live. I wanted to share it live with you. Um, and maybe we can chat a minute. I'm actually headed over to my parents to visit and maybe watch my brother's sermon online. Anyway, and uh, Mom and I are doing some surprise videos for y'all for Mother's Day. So, so we're gonna do some singing. I'm, I'm definitely not as gifted as my mother, but I can jump in. You know, Daddy sang bass, Mama sang tenor, little brother jumped on in there, I'll be the little brother jumps on in there. Anyway, um, I played my mom's CD while we were in the pandemic. Where is my opener? And I just let it play live. And you regular viewers were just like in, in love with it. Um, it's a Southern Gospel CD that my mom did not make for money to sell. She made it for her mother um, for Mother's Day because my grandmother had fallen and lost her vision. And so, um, she could play that and hear her daughter singing. Anyway, okay, here's how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take a can of tomato paste. Got that open. I am going to, golly, is this even gonna fit on here? Hold on. Okay, just barely, barely. This thing is, how many pounds? 8.8 .8 pounds. Anyway, um, I like to season meat, especially a big piece like this, early in the day, refrigerate it, if I'm not cooking in the crock pot, and let the, let the flavors really get in there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this. I've lined my biggest pan that I have um, with heavy oil. And I don't know that I've seen this big a piece of meat unless we've killed a hog around here. Anyway, brisket has quite a bit of fat on the outside. It's not a thick layer of fat, but a, a layer of fat nonetheless. And so I'm gonna put that right there and squeeze him on. And then I'll wrap it real good so that nothing runs over in the oven. Let me get rid of this. Hang tight, this is gonna be a good one. Um, BFR Beef, let me give them a shout out. BFR Beef, is located in Boone, North Carolina. Um, they, uh, I, buy my, I buy a lot of beef from them. Um, it's grass fed. Uh, all, uh, you know, farm farmers again, supporting other farm families. They have a website. I will post it at the top in the title over this particular feed. It's BFR, Bill Frank Robert, at, uh, beef at, no, let's see, BFRbeef.com. Lil Dan Spice Man, it's his family. So anyway, I watched his mother do this. I actually was in her kitchen. She was teaching me how to do this. And just FYI, his mother is, um, she graduated from college with like a food science degree or something. So his daddy's agriculture, his mama's a, she knows what she's doing. So food safety and all that. Anyway, I'm gonna score it with, I think Lil Dan gave me this. It's a, it's a jack, jacquard. It's a jacquard. And um, I'm just gonna score this meat. Oh, it's still a little bit frozen in the middle, but that's okay. This will help tenderize the meat. chat with y'all oh thank you i appreciate that this is a sabika necklace I, I dearly love it let's see gosh this could help with frustration during the work week for sure use this jacquard jacquard okay now First off, I want some dry seasoning. I'm gonna use the Everyday All-Purpose Seasoning, which is on the website, cookacutknife.com. It's also, you can Facebook search it and make your own and put in your search bar, cookacutknife, keep it real. 
every day on purpose season. It will come up. It's basically salt, pepper, garlic powder, uh, onion powder, and parsley. Now to this, and I want to really get it covered here, get some flavor in there. Flavor Flav. Oh, it's seen something that Flavor Flav did, but I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm going to add some thyme. Okay, how many of y'all cook with thyme? Um, if you're cooking a big piece of beef, whether it be on the grill, in the crock pot, or whatever, thyme has a great, adds a great flavor to beef, in my opinion, my experience. And I'm not gonna, you know, cover it like heavy with thyme, but I want every bite of this meat to have some thyme in it. Oh shoot, glad my hands are clean. And if you grow fresh thyme, which I've got some out there, I think, uh, but it's not ready. Um, that's even better, even better. Okay, to this, I'm going to make a rub with a combination, where's the bowl when you need it? Seriously, here we go. I'm gonna make a rub with this tomato paste and some honey. Not a lot of honey, but a little bit of honey. A little bit of honey, honey. So this is just the tiny, the six ounce. And you know, I, I read up on how to cook briskets and how people like them, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people like barbecue sauce on them. I did not want barbecue, but I'm gonna use this last tablespoon of my Hunts for a Hemp honey to give this just a tiny bit of sweet. I need a spoon, small one. I need a personal system. <laughs> You know, on those cooking shows on Food Network, somebody else is doing all their measuring and handing and anyway, It's live here and raw. Mm -hmm. And that's the part of keeping it real. And I think that's part of the appeal of it because people want to see real life stuff. We're all into this reality TV to a degree society. And I don't want to see well, I do. I watch a lot of the cooking shows myself. But sometimes you just want to see it real. You know, like how long it takes exactly. And because listen, guys, it takes some time to prep, meaning get all your stuff out. Yeah, it does. Okay, we're going to put, I am going to put this onto the beef roast. And then I'm going to get my hands in it. If you're grossed out by that, you know, we'll grab you a spatula, but it doesn't gross me out in the least bit, but I am going to take that ring off. Um, the hub's got his finger hung in a piece of equipment a couple weeks ago, and I said, take that wedding band off. So I'm wearing it. Sentimental. Anyway, okay, I'm going to rub that all over this beef brisket. Yes, I am. It smells wonderful. Can I just say that? The tomato uh, paste uh, from what uh, Lil Dan's mom told me, Ann, um, who, again, is a food science person, whatever, and a great cook. Uh, there's something about the tomato, the properties in tomato, the acid in it that helps break the meat down, tenderize it as well. So, oh Lord, this is a mess. Hold on, let me wash my hands but I don't want to leave any of it. Um, I'm going to cover this with heavy foil. We'll chat a minute. Then I got to get to my mama's. Yes, I do. I've picked some flowers for her and I got to go. Oh, one more thing. One more. I had just a few of these little uh, teeny tiny tomatoes that I had in the omelet this morning. They are fabulous. Got them at the grocery store. I'm just going to do this right here. So I don't waste them. Um, whatever, whatever. They're great in an omelet, and every time you bite into one, because they're so tiny, it doesn't splatter everywhere. And um, I like that. Uh, but I also like the flavor and the look. And when it bursts in your mouth, you get 
this warm sensation because they're warmer in any way. I know that's too much information. Okay, I'm gonna do this one more time. And I'm gonna come back with a little bit of time. Just a shake, shake. And Brett and Sheila will be joining, my cousin Brett, be joining us for dinner tonight. And we're gonna eat this brisket, y'all. This is gonna go into a very low temperature oven at about three o'clock, 3.30-ish, so we could be ready to eat by 6.30. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in a 300 degree oven, fully wrapped in heavy foil so that it, where is my heavy foil? Oh, there it goes. Um, and I'm gonna cook it low and slow. And if it was a, a little bit smaller, I'd finish it off. Oh shoot, on the grill, I've got some more in the pantry. Anyway, that's how I'm gonna cook it, y'all. Low and slow for about three hours. And it's gonna be yummy. I'm gonna do maybe some red potatoes and some Brussels sprouts or something, or salad or green beans. I don't know. Beef brisket, Mama Lisa style. I'll show a picture of it at the beginning of, uh, let's see. I'm live. Okay, we're gonna chat. That's what we're gonna do. Lord Colleen, help keep me straight. We hold on. Let me get. Let me grab my coffee. A girl can't talk without her coffee on a Sunday morning, and I, I, do, I can't talk long. Let me cover my boiled eggs over here because they're boiling. Uh, I boil ten eggs on Sunday, so I'll have two boiled eggs to eat for breakfast each morning. Anyway, oh cleavage. Sorry. Oh, my mom's gonna have a fit. Anyway, oh, get the ring. Thank you, Marlene. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, Y'all pay attention so well. Um, let's talk brisket. I will do a video, I think, if Brett's up to it, um, we'll, we'll film something. Have a super great day, Gail, you too. Got the ring, Kim, thank you for the reminder. Um, hey, Ruth Reynolds, um, here's what I can tell you. Uh, as to not ruin this surprise for Mother's Day. Hey, girl, better get that ring. I know, Gloria, right. You understand what I was telling, don't you? Because Gloria's a farmer's wife, too. Andy hung it up on something. I don't remember what, a planter or something, cedar planter, sprayer. I don't know, but I said, you, you got, uh, give me that, and I'm going to wear it. And when the boys are ready to propose, I guess I can trade it in, get money, you know, get their calls down or whatever. Anyway, point is, Mama, we're going to do some music together today. Uh, we haven't done it in, my grandmother's been dead for, oh gosh, y'all, it's been 15 years. The boys were little. It was when my grandmother turned 70 and Mama conned me in to singing with her. And at the church, we had a surprise birthday party for, Grand, for Mama. Anyway, my point is, I'm going to record it. Uh, Melinda, I talked about that, the silicone ring, but listen, Melinda, we've been married 31 years, and I'm like, I don't, you know, if you don't wear it, you don't wear it, I'd rather you have your finger and still be healthy enough to work and support the fam. So, anyway, um, oh, Nicole, you are so sweet. Thank you so much. Um, I'll, I, if you're interested, and let me know that if you are, I'll let you see this dress in a minute. Anyway, we're going to record some stuff, and... <laughs> Hopefully post it for um, Mother's Day. Can't make no promises, but well, hey, Kathy from Toronto. Um, this dress came from Silver Gallery. I got it last year. And I usually wear an XL, at least. This is a large, I'll show it to you. I guess y'all wanna see it. I'm not a fashion model for sure. I, I mean, I wear a lot of hats, but that ain't one of them. Let me tilt it down. Okay, I'm gonna step back here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My kids are gonna laugh at this. Mama, what do you think you're doing? Okay, I could be a plus size model for this. Anyway, it's a large, it is a t-shirt dress. What I love about it, pockets. Yes, I do. And Purdue still got these in the store. You can see it at Silver Gallery International. I'll post that link. Somebody please remind me. The things I love about it, and I wear it to work. I wear it to church. But you can sleep in this sucker, and it's got that kind of material like that pajama kind of material. I love to tie it up on one side. 
and I can wear it all day. Here's the other thing for, for fluffy women like me. It's rouged, if y'all can see that. Let me see if I can back it up. Back it up, back it up. Uh, it's rouged in the back. So it kind of hides your back fat. For you women that don't have that, good for you. But it's coming. Anyway, yeah. So, um, and I think the price point on it, oh gosh, don't hold me to this. Purdue will kill me if I get it wrong. Uh, I, think, I think it's 36-ish, but you can check the website. Anyway, she's got different colors. I have one in this color. I have a red one, and I have a cheetah print one. The cheetah print one I got, that was it was an XL, because I just insisted on getting the XL, but I really think I look a little thinner in the large. So they run a little big, that's what I'm telling you. All right, guys, I'm going to hop off of here. I hope you have a wonderful day. Get some Jesus in you today, somehow, some way. It's much easier these days online if you don't go to church because of the COVID. But anyway, uh, and I'll be lifting all you guys up as well. We'll see y'all when we see you. A little later today with Brett. He's really funny, and he's really handsome, but don't tell him I said that because he'll get the big head, and then I'll have to hang out with him. And then it'll be my job to take him down a notch, and I don't want to have to take him down a notch. I will. Okay, Diana, post the website. All right, I'm going to post Purdue's website. She's on Insta and Facebook, um, and you can follow them. And you can message Brittany uh, Silver Gallery. So, let, me talk, let me type the, let me type it. It's Silver Gallery. Lord, I'm breathing heavy. Silver Gallery International, and it's spelled like this online, and of course, Mark Zuckerberg ain't gonna let me spell it. No, he ain't. Come on, Mark. Dot com. Silver Gallery International dot com. Check it out. There it is. Let me pin it to the top. There. Please remind me to pin things like that that y'all are interested in because I'll forget it. So anyway, check it out. I, I, she still has them in stock. She has a second location at Southport, North Carolina called Lexi Bees. But if you get in touch with Brittany uh, or Alexis, that's her two daughters that are just precious and so sweet. Um, any of y'all that's bought from them will tell you that. They're just, anyway, call them and tell them, I saw this dress that Lisa Clapp had on, and it's a t-shirt dress, and I want one. What color do you have? They will hook you up. Make a nice Mother's Day gift. Anyway. All right, guys. See y'all. Bye.